Hello everybody and welcome to the fourth C tutorial. It will also be the last one we're doing today. And we today we will be doing functions. So let's go into the functions folder when I I swear that is the third time. <laughs> no, I haven't clicked on the thing and it's done that. And now I haven't been able to input. I shall have to remember next time. And it shall probably become a running joke if I don't. Let's see. So we are going to do what we usually do here. So, let's declare some variables. Let's call it Bab, because why not? So, yeah, I've been talking a lot about functions in previous tutorials and how we've used them. But maybe you've just been sitting there wondering whether you you want to write your own. So look no further than this tutorial, because this will show you how to make these functions. So, how do we do our functions? We can do this. So, remember the previous data types I showed you of the float the long, the short, the integer, the long, the character. Now these aren't just used for variables, these can be used for functions as well by s and defines them by something that they call a return type. Now what a return type is is that when a, fu when a function is executed it can return a variable so say you wanted to add two numbers and then you'd return the number the result of what the addition would be to say another variable so in fact we're going to do that so we're going to declare up here add now this bit up here isn't necessarily f necessary for all of them but if you want to include these things called arguments they are very necessary because they are in fact the arguments so what is an argument an argument is essentially a place where you can stick a variable for the program for the function to act on so we've got a and b here they don't have to be called a and b to include in the function so but they have to be the same as up here when declared down here because otherwise the compiler spazzes out and with good reason so this is our function it is it, well, considering main is a function, it's identical to main, except it isn't automatically executed. So what we do here is that there there is no BAB to this. In theory, it doesn't exist to this function. So you, if you just said, say, BAB plus BAB or something, or BAB equals BAB plus BAB, it would say it's undeclared because it can't see it because it isn't within the scope of this because it's outside the scope because it's within the scope of the main. So, what we can do, we can do. Now, this may all look very algebraic and stuff, but believe me, if you stick AB together, it looks like a completely different variable to the machine. And often with hilarious results as well, but that's only really a noob mistake. So, we could just do that. So what this does here is it returns the value of a plus b to uh, back to whoever's like calling the function. So what we could do here is we could do b a b equals. Let's in fact let's not do that. Let's make them user defined. So by the way, you can make quite a good calculator by simply em employing these sorts of methods. I did that. Before anybody asks, I know that I haven't declared another variable. If anybody's thinking that. And in that case, you are somewhat vision. Abba. I wish I could get their bloody songs out my head. Because they are annoying and yada yada yada. So 
So what we're going to do is we're going to receive user input. Believe me, I've made calculators like this in under 15 minutes, so that is a very useful thing for fun functions are very useful for. It's you can call them and you can do whatever you want with them within context of the program. So we've done this. Now, how do we include our parameters within a function? What we do here is say we want to say make ABBA equal to it. So we do equals add and that executes this and then ABBA becomes equal to A plus B which is BAB plus ABA but you don't have to declare it like this you can always just go also there's no particular order you can just put them wherever you like provided they're within the same data type as defined up here so you can declare them wherever you like but you can get you can like obviously if you're doing something like this you aren't going to have anything get that return value so that's pretty much useless so there's also one last thing I'd like to show to you that you won't have heard before at least from my tutorial you might have heard it from someone else's and I think if you've looked at someone else's tutorial that's a good thing because I think that every not everybody's perfect let's say print So, notice this here, it's a void. Now what this means is it doesn't have a return type, so if you don't want to return a number, you can just declare a void. Which means it takes up, it doesn't necessarily take up as much space as an integer would in memory. I say necessarily, because it's null, well, it's kind of void. Now I know that a lot of these things could just be easily replicated without a function, but to be honest, I'm demonstrating functions, so shut up you people who know what you're talking about. <laughs> so what this does here is it prints out our character C. So what we can do is spell out banana with this, so or something or potato. Let's do potato. Note the quotation marks of it. You know, I have a nasty feeling that I'm going to spell something wrong and someone's going to point it out and I'm going to be like, Ugh! Hopefully I won't. I shall spell check it actually. But not with a machine because I can spell check myself. Potate. Potate. Obviously, it'd be more efficient just to do the um, sh the string literal to it. Okay. And so, obviously, we've got our potato here. And let's not forget not to put a new line here. This may look like two characters, but to the machine, it counts as one because of the combination. So, this is just calling our functions and all that. Um, so yeah, so we are done. So, in fact, to do that, to prove this, I will print out, you know, bloody sort of, put it down here. Abba. So, what this program will do, I'm just saving it here, we'll add these together up here, print that, and then just print out potato. So, at least it should anyway. You never know when these things go wrong. Let's call it function. Uh, sorry, it looked a bit like a comma. Let's type in 12, 15. So we've got 27 potato. Now that is where I forgot a new line. That's why you want a new line. So it's done essentially what it wants. It has carried out its functions correctly. And that was the functions tutorial. Thank you for watching everybody and I shall be back next time. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.